we've been doing nothing but suppress, suppress, suppress fires. So what happens when you do nothing but suppress fires? Uh, nothing gets burned. Vegetation, mm-hmm. trees, undergrowth, bushes, none of that stuff gets burned. So it just constantly builds and builds and builds and builds and builds. Mm-hmm. Now you got more fuel for the fires. Now you've got fires are going to, oh. yeah, you've got uh, fires that are going to burn longer. Uh, there's just there's a lot more for these fires to eat up. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what has suppression done over time is it's allowed big undergrowth to happen so that when it comes and correlates with things like climate change, you're going to get uh, a lot more extreme fire behavior. These fires are going to be larger. They're going to be bigger. Um, and that's the management aspect of things that, that we need to look at. And that's the change in the fire culture that we're looking at right now. Mm-hmm. It's okay. How do we go from doing nothing but suppressing fires to managing the forest and the wildlands in a better way mm-hmm. so that when fires do happen, we don't have these big, extreme, crazy fires on our hands. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. That's very interesting. So, so I think one of the main things is that people, uh, maybe don't realize that suppressing all fires is actually contrary to like what forests have adapted to. It sounds like, right? Just we've always had these fires, so to have none, all of a sudden, is not it's not not good for the ecosystem. Essentially, yeah, exactly. Because when these fires happen, you know that that's what helps some of these trees regrow. So a fire comes ripping through and and it burns these trees mm-hmm. or this brush. Well, a lot of those things depend on fire for their seeds to spread or mm-hmm. um, for them to start regrowing again. And then you have things like woodpeckers and beetles that come in and make their homes off of these uh, mm-hmm. burn areas. So they're very dependent on that too. And plus, if you get a lot, if you have a lack of fire with, um, with drought conditions, now you've got bark beetle infestations, you know, mm. that come in or just chewing away and then you get a lot more dead trees. So it's not even selfish from a human standpoint, even outside of the context of how it affects humans, it just literally for the ecosystem itself. It is good to have fires sometimes. Yeah, right? it definitely is. Okay. It definitely is. So it's fire with safety. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like it's you don't want to overdo <laughs> mm-hmm. the fire or anything really. That that's actually kind of philosophical too yeah. when you think about burning something to rebuild something mm-hmm. or have the a habit. reset button. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. a reset button. That's very interesting. You don't yeah. want to overdo the fire, and you don't want to overdo the not fire also. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No. No. That, yeah. That's actually absolutely right. And right now, there's even this this. Uh, the idea, so like after a fire happens, we usually go in there and we log a lot of the trees and stuff. But there's some scientists out there that are saying we should not be logging those things because if we leave that stuff there and we allow that stuff to kind of regrow and revamp, those are going to start collecting CO2 again, right? Mm-hmm. So therefore, it's going to help.